very brief 40 second video clip of the National Spelling Bee, which took place a few weeks ago. Let's watch. Koinonia. Koinonia may have the definition. Intimate spiritual communion and participative sharing in a common religious commitment and spiritual community. May have the language of origin. Greek. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's koinonia and kinonia. May have the part of speech. Noun. Can you please repeat the word? Koinonia, kinonia. Koinonia. K O I N O N I A. Koinonia. That is correct. <laughs> that very smart Texas 14 year old boy, Karthik Namani, won the recent National Spelling Bee, spelling the word correctly, koinonia. It's a Greek word that is often translated in our English New Testament as fellowship. And koinonia is all about today's God story. It's all about what 1 John is all about. It's all about what my message today is all about. In fact, if somebody asks you, well, what was the message about at, at celebration today? All you need to do is remember one word, koinonia. Say it with me, koinonia. Great. Now, I would not have known this about the story about this winning word, but it was at our recent uh, Synod Assembly in Redwood Falls on June 8th and 9th that the person who came from uh, ELCA, to give the ELCA report from Chicago, showed us this picture. He started his report with this picture and told us this story. And he also went on to share that he was in worship then the day after, or the, the, the Sunday after uh, Karthik won on the word koinonia. And his pastor in the sermon mentioned about this story. And the, his pastor said, and I would have accepted the correct spelling of koinonia as this, L-O-V-E, because that's what koinonia is. It is love. Jesus' community of authentic love. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let me back up just a bit. Today, we begin a new series, new preaching summer series, Love Made Real, on the New Testament book of 1 John. We'll take four weekends on it. And one of my goals in this sermon series is that everybody know where 1 John is in the Bible. So I'm going to ask you to please find a black Bible. There are usually one every two seats in the in the chair backs in front of you. Find a black Bible. If you have a youth or child next, help them. And uh, the page number's up there, but very simple way to know where 1 John is. All you do is go to the very back of the Bible. The last book in the New Testament, last book in the Bible is Revelation. The second to last is Jude. And then the third, fourth, fifth last books are 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. There we go. It's also page 989 in the black Bible. Here is 1 John, and the first four verses, today's God story. So 1 John 1, 1 through 4. Now, this is not the Gospel of John, of course. The Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, one of the uh, four Gospel in the beginning, near the beginning of the New Testament. This is not the Gospel of John. This is 1 John, but there are some... Uh, we don't know if it's the same author, probably not, but someone probably from the Johannine school. And there's some similar expressions. And if we look at the very first verse, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. We declare to you what was from the beginning. It almost sounds a little bit like the prologue of the Gospel of John, where the Gospel starts... Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Here we've got, we declare to you what was from the beginning. 
But let me give you just a bit of context to 1 John that you'll find, I think, very helpful. As Christians, we believe that Jesus is fully God and fully human, both fully God, fully human. The Gospel of John emphasized the divine side of Jesus. He's divine. He's divine. But now 1 John, which is probably written just a little bit later after the gospel is written, is speaking in, into a new context in which some have taken that emphasis of the vi divinity of Christ too far. You know, maybe you've heard the expression, you can fall off a horse on either side or you can drive into the ditch <laughs> on either side. And there is, at the time that 1 John is, is writing, it seems that there's a group that has pushed the divinity of Christ so much that Jesus' humanity is not being emphasized. And this group is seeing Jesus only very super spiritualized, only in spiritual terms. And now 1 John is going to emphasize Jesus' humanity. And we hear it, don't we? We hear it right away in the first verse. What we have heard, what we have seen, what we have touched. Do you hear the, uh, the tangible, palpable presence uh, of the word of life? Now that's Jesus Christ, word of life. And we hear of this real, tangible presence of Christ. Jesus is not simply some spiritual principle. God communicates to us through the embodied word, the word that took on body, took on flesh. God incarnate, God made flesh. The word incarnate is Jesus Christ. Jesus is not simply some spiritual idea or philosophy or a principle. Our Christian faith is not simply about some disembodied spirituality. Our faith has a down-to-earth particularity to it. It's, it's about God who, who took on flesh, who came among us, lived among us, and, and uh, in, in Jesus Christ, lived among the marginalized, died a death of crucifixion on a cross, rose again. Truly divine, truly human. And we follow this embodied word who calls for an embodied faith lived out in authentic communities, Jesus' communities of love. Well, it's not love in the abstract, but it is love in the concrete, down-to-earth, practical love. And what's the point of it all? Koinonia. That's where we get into this word koinonia. Now I would just ask you to look with me at verse 3 of 1 John 1. And let's look together at verse 3. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have. There it is. Koinonia. New Testament written in Greek. The Greek word there is koinonia. So that you have, and it's here translated, fellowship with us. And truly are Again, koinonia is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Koinonia, that winning word of the spelling bee, is so important for us as Christians. Often translated in our English Bibles as fellowship, but that doesn't really get, the word fellowship doesn't really get to the, to the real heart of it. Sometimes we hear, you know, having fellowship, and we might think, oh, that's coffee and cookies uh, after worship. And there's nothing wrong with coffee and cookies. <laughs> I like that. But if it's only meant in the sort of kind of very surface chit-chat, that's not the real moxie of this word. It is, koinonia is, is a bondedness, a uh, mutual relationship, authentic community. It's it, it's that sharing life together, sharing life in Christ's love in many ways is, is koinonia. And there's this both this vertical and this horizontal dimension to it. 
vertical, in that it's an abiding in, in Christ's love, and it is embodied in our love for, for the neighbor, for one another. Authentic, down to earth. And we're called to be an authentic Jesus community that embodies love. Lo love not in the abstract, but in concrete, down to earth, real ways. Koinonia. Now, there's many ways we see that happening here in, in, at Celebration. I want to name two of, a re of two recent stories. One from VBS, B Vacation Bible School. We had that earlier this uh, month and earlier part of June. Nicole Oftedal is a coordinator. And she told us a story that um, a mother brought an older youth to help with uh, with VBS and brought the younger child to participate in the in the program. But the older youth who came to help really didn't want to be there. And Nicole could see that visibly in her body language, kind of arms crossed and standing off to a to a corner. And Nicole went up to her and just really met her where she where she was and said, you know, you really don't want to be here, do you? And she said, no, I, I don't. But Nicole just lovingly, in with this invitational spirit, said, you know, reminded of how much she was a role model to the, to the younger children and how much she needed her and could make a difference and just lovingly invited her. And so much credit to that youth. That youth jumped in, started working with a preschool group, and they loved her. One especially, one little child just kind of hung on her. And she was just felt this love. She came back to help the next day. The day after that, she brought a friend with her because she was having so much fun. And she wanted her friend to experience koinonia, sharing life in Christ's love. Another one, um, zero gravity last Monday night. Nicole Grant is our a senior high and young adult uh, director. And Nicole Grant was telling us that Monday nights are typically, Zero Gravity is our senior high fellowship group, youth group. Meet in the summer Monday nights. But last uh, week, uh, or earlier this week, they were already planning to go to a, uh, a movie on Tuesday. And Nicole had the National Youth Gathering meeting. But it was get coming near to the end of that, and one of the youth, Jacob Brinks, said, said, oh, Nicole, we can so have zero gravity. It's not even 8 o'clock yet. And Nicole said, you know, I don't know if you thought it or said it, but it was like, well, if kids want to come to church, I'm not going to stand in their way. Yes, start texting. And started texting kids, and within 20 minutes, 15 senior high youth were here. And I don't know if you were here Monday night. I was here for the service and confirmation group. There was so much laughter and joy in the building. Koinonia. During offering today, you're going to see pictures of those who served last Sunday at Place of Hope. Another koinonia. Sharing life in Christ's love. And my concern today is that today in culture, many are drifting away from the church. Many are not becoming involved in a Christian faith community. Maybe they've been hurt. Maybe they think it's too judgmental. I don't know. But I'm concerned about that because this is where we experience koinonia, experiencing life, uh, the divine love of the triune God lived out in love for each other. You know, the church is not just another club or another organization as good as clubs and organizations are. But the church is the body of Christ. And it is here that we invite people into this fellowship, this koinonia, with the divine love, with, with, with God. And then share it with each other as we embody that in real ways. To, to live out those actions that we have a God who cares for you, for me, for this world. 
On Thursday of this week, my husband Larry and I celebrated our 38th wedding anniversary. We were married June 21st, 1980. And you know, many people say they don't remember a, a thing from the wedding sermon. But I remember one thing very distinctly. The pastor who married us gave us a Bible verse to take into our marriage, and it's 1 Peter 5, 7. Just a little bit before 1 John, there's 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxieties on God, for God cares for you. Cast all your cares, all your anxieties on the Lord, for this Lord cares. God cares. What a great Bible verse. I have remembered that these 38 years, many times. And how important it is in life, in marriage, that we cast all those cares and anxieties onto, the, onto our Lord. And that's who we invite people into, in this experience of this love. And, and we will get it wrong. I mean, we will mess up koinonia. We will need forgiveness again and again and again. We will make mistakes. We will say hurtful words. And we will need to die to that and be raised to new life in Christ. But it is all about koinonia. And if somebody asks you, well, how do you spell it? You go ahead and spell it. Say it with me. L. O-V-E, because that's what it is, koinonia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand as you're able as we sing now the hymn of the day. Take my life, thou. 